Evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your favorite English news program. I'm in studio today with Mrs. Candit Legede. Mrs. Legede, you're welcome. Thank you very much, well, Mrs. Alex. Yeah, as we all know, Mrs. Uh, Candid Legede is a prominent businesswoman in Togo, and uh, I will give her the floor to really give us more details about herself. Thank you, Alex. Uh, first, allow me to express my a pleasure to be here with you tonight. My name is Candid Leguede and I'm the president of the Federation of Business Women and Entrepreneurs of Togo. But I also hold a regional whole role. I'm the pre regional president for this uh, same federation in which gathers uh, women entrepreneurs from all the 15 countries of the West African countries. Yeah, so. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Candid Leguede. You be in studio with us as uh, we go through some current affairs. Okay. Seven new ambassadors presented their credentials to the head of state for Isazina Nyasingbe on Wednesday week. They were from the United Kingdom, Venezuela, Canada, Colombia, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Switzerland. A summary of the audience by Clotilde Parisi. Mr. John Benjamin of the United Kingdom was the first diplomat to be received by the head of state. After handing he over his credentials to the president, the he declared to the press that his presence is to strengthen the existing relations between the two countries. Another issue tabled for discussion was the struggle against drug trafficking and poaching. He rejoiced over Togo's decision to open an embassy in the UK. John Benjamin was followed by the Venezuelan diplomat Alejandro Israel Correa Ortega. Education, health, and other promising sectors of activities, according to him, will be reinforced through the aid program of his country. He expressed his joy to be in Togo, since his forefathers, he stated, are believed to have originated from Africa. The third ambassador to present his credentials on Wednesday this week was the Canadian Christopher Tonley. He said to have exchanged with the president on the cooperation between Canada and Togo. Another issue discussed was his country's candidacy to the Secretariat of the French-speaking communities. Built upon the ties with Togo in the fields of tourism, mines, agriculture, and trade were the main ideas on which Mrs. Claudia Torbe's declaration to the press were founded. The Colombian diplomat intends to work for an improved cooperation between the two countries. Mrs. Clemence Traore was very pleased with the solidarity Togo citizens expressed to Burkinabis following the air crash that occurred last week on the Malian border. Her wishes were that this relationship existing between Togo and Burkina Faso may continue. She declared joint cooperation commission meetings need to be held regularly by members of the two governments. Mrs. Konanji Aisata Kulibali is the new ambassador of Mali to Togo. On her side, she paid tribute to Togolese soldiers posted for peacekeeping missions in Mali. The last diplomat, but not the least, was the sweet ambassador, Mr. Gerard Brooker. His mission is to work for the economic development of Togo and draw a project for Swiss businessmen to invest in Togo. Still on Wednesday, the head of the Togolese government, Atensila Gudi Aumizunu, visited the isolation center for possible Ebola virus victims. This act is to enable him have a full assurance that necessary medical steps are being taken by Togolese authorities to combat possible cases. The center located at the campus teaching hospital is made up of an administration block, an outpatient department, an admission ward, and a lab. We need to recall here that he was led through the visit by Professor Bajona Sonyi, military health director and advisor. As Togo is getting ready, fully prepared to meet the Ebola virus, 
Affected nations belonging to the Mano River Authority also met to find ways and means of combating this deadly disease. Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea are the countries involved in this first encounter, supported by the Samaritan Fund. For the first time since the outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus early this year, two Americans are confirmed to be infected. A doctor and his colleague contracted the disease in Liberia. They work for the humanitarian organization called Samaritan's Purse. The man is in serious condition in a hospital in Monrovia, but will soon be repatriated to the United States. Uh, we did a series of blood tests, and last Saturday uh, we confirmed uh, on two positive tests that he has Ebola. Uh, he is in a very serious condition. Uh, he is stable. Uh, Ebola takes um, uh, 10 to 14 days to run its course. Uh, the mortality rate for people with Ebola is 57% in Liberia. Uh, we pray that uh, he will survive. Following the confirmation of the first American case of Ebola, the governmental agency Peace Corps decided to withdraw its volunteers from Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Washington has also promised to help all NGOs repatriate their employees back to the U.S. Staff are now ready to care for any person who show up to their hospitals with symptoms. They know to, to be told that if they come in to a clinic after they get back here, that immediately will say that I have been in Western Africa and, and to, if, if there's even a suspicion, there are protocols of immediately quarantining those people and making a diagnostic to make sure they do not have Ebola. To help in the fight against this Ebola outbreak, Washington will send 50 experts to West Africa in the upcoming month. In the meantime, the U.S. has issued a travel warning to Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia. The risk to travelers is both from the infectious disease, Ebola, but also from the unstable security situation that has resulted in these countries uh, because of the anxiety and unrest related to the response to the outbreak. France has also issued the same warning to anybody traveling to those West African countries. The African community honors women every year on 31st of July a day devoted to the struggle against ignorance, injustice and other socio-political scourges on women. This year, the event gathered Togolese women and key personalities at Hotel Eda Oba in Lomé, where they shared their views on the theme, role of women and girls in scientific and technological education. Clotilde Eda Parisi has the result report for you. In Togo, the event started with the launching ceremony of the activities marking the day. This year's celebrations are focused on the role of women and girls in education, science, and technologies for African Renaissance. Thereon, the Togolese government, in line with the theme on the agenda, intends to arouse the interest of women and girls in scientific and technological fields through many activities countrywide. Various personalities, including government officials, members of parliament, diplomats, the representatives of national and international institutions, as well as administrative, political, traditional, and religious authorities were in attendance at the ceremony. Many top experts from all the horizons gave speeches in the presence of a throng of women and girls. The Minister of Social Action, Women Promotion and Illiteracy Elimination, Mrs. Dede Ahuefa Ekwe, seized the opportunity to highlight the need to promote women and girls' education, particularly in science and technologies. Therefore, she stated that through the activities in view, a plea will be made to partners to facilitate the access of girls to scientific sectors. They also plan to heighten the population's awareness of the role and importance of these sectors in the development process. Some of the target scientific and technological areas quoted are infrastructures, energy, health, agriculture, industry, telecommunication, communication, and trade. Investigations showed that girls and women can also excel in these sectors. Orienting them to such studies will undoubtedly enable to meet the labor shortage and the needs of these growth areas as well. 
to achieve its goals, the government has taken many measures to curb the shortage by creating scientific senior secondary schools with 25 to 30% of girls as well as scholarships for hardworking girls. In cooperation with NGOs, civil society organizations, national and international institutions working for the same purpose. The increasing number of postgraduate girl students in the scientific departments of Lome University is indeed proof of these efforts, thanks to the mentoring and tutorial system initiated by the Togolese Women's Association for the Promotion of Science and Technology. The results of this system are very encouraging with 20 girls preparing their PhD, 500 in BA, 17 in master courses, and over 100 on the labor market. Nevertheless, there still remains a lot to reach these goals. The strategies for the massive emergence of women and girls and their empowerment are many. For one whole month, educationalists will plead with partners, help the population have a sound grasp of the role and importance of science and technologies. Well, you've just listened to Clotilde Paris's uh, report. Madame, uh, you are welcome back to the program. Mm. Thank you. You've just watched the running commentary on, yes. the, on the day, mm -hmm. and you've also worked in the domain of uh, women promotion in Togo mm -hmm. and uh, in West Africa, I would say, and the world over. So how had women you work with celebrated their day? You know, it's always um, a great pleasure to celebrate that day because uh, um, women, the whole African community, uh, wants to uh, give uh, honor, to honor the woman, the African woman, mm -hmm. because they know um, her participation, the way she is involved in the development of all nations. So um, it's a community celebration. So everybody, everybody uh, gets involved to celebrate it its own way. Mm -hmm. But within our federation, we thought that it will be easier to gather our efforts, I mean, to join or associate our efforts to the efforts made by the Ministry of uh, Promotion of Women Affairs. Mm -hmm. To, to celebrate that day, so to make it a unique and memorable day. Because this is our way, you know, to emphasize our engagement. Yeah. This is the way to show that if we do things together, we will do it in harmony. And there is a saying that, that say, there is a saying that the more powerful you are, the, if you yeah. are uh, together. So we think that um, this is good we have an international day in march but still african women we all know that they are very very much engaged and they are in majority more even more active than men we always say that in our federation we also have the mentoring program that yeah. we carry out every year and uh, but of course we always insert this mentoring program in the national program carried out and executed by the mm -hmm. ministry of promotion affairs and this is uh, a collective effort and we want it to be like that to 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 be able to advance together and make it more uh, powerful and make it more visible for women to be able to um, identify yeah. their own priorities and to you know, be together to take the decisions that we really need in order to advance in this field. Yeah, yeah. so you just talked to us about uh, how the day was celebrated and what yeah. motivated women, especially African women, to also choose their day. Now, what, uh, what was the theme chosen for this year, this year's celebration? Why that theme? Um, this year, um, the, the theme is about the role of women and young girls yeah. in education, science, and technology for an African Renaissance. Yeah. But as you know, each country has the latitude or the capacity to change it or adapt the theme according to its own priorities. But in Togo, this theme is so relevant to our concerns, yeah. our priorities that we have chosen to keep it like that but for a, to a, pros a more prosperous Togo. Yeah. Um, the theme, I think, uh, has been chosen because there is a, ver a very large gap you know, between uh, uh, girls and, uh, and boys in the field of technology, yeah. in the field of science. 
the more we see women in literary literacy, yeah. uh, I mean uh, in the um, arts, in yeah. arts, yeah. Uh, the less we see them in the field of uh, industry, for example, or science or technology. Mm -hmm. So in order to <coughs> to bridge that gap, um, the women, the International Women Organization has chosen this role to allow all the nations to allow women to uh, to to think together yeah. and see the ways that we can uh, uh, which solutions we can find in order to bridge that gap yeah. i know it's not easy because uh, it has to start from the basic education because yeah. most of the time you know that uh, we women are the central central educator we are the educators of the family we are the educators of the society so we have to tell our girls that they are ab capable of doing the things that boys are doing and we should not make this discrimination about uh, women what who a girl should be or what what a man should do so i think it's our role as a woman our role as a spouse our role as mothers and sisters to tell our young girls that it's time you know for us to take the lead and and then choose those scientific fields in order to be able at the end mm -hmm. to compete with men at the same level and i always say at the horizontal level yes, yes. mother you just ended by saying that uh, we want to put women at a level so mm -hmm. that they can compete equally with men mm -hmm. and you also said somewhere along the line that mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, you try and find solutions mm -hmm. that will bridge the gap between men, uh, this gender gap between men and women. Now, uh, what are some of the important decisions that uh, you think the two governments is taking in order to make women enjoy their rights as other citizens of the opposite gender in order to put them on the same level? No, um, the, the Togo government has is doing a lot and has taken uh, very, very relevant decisions and important decisions that will help, you know, bridge that gap. But as you know, um, an activity it takes time, yeah. you know, to give results, to give impact. But we will give some few examples only because uh, uh, there have been a creation of scientific uh, schools, yeah. you know, for girls, and we, uh, there has also been a reduction in the scholar uh, school fees, yes. you know, in order to allow more girls to be able to to, to be educated, and there has been uh, also um, uh, how you call it um, scholarship yeah. for girls, you know, who are uh, doing very well in school in in those scientific, technical, and industrial fields, and also there has been uh, some sensitization some uh, sensitization programs for girls in order to uh, tell them, you know, to invite them to join those uh, technical and uh, um, industrial fields. We have also seen uh, some centers, training centers, uh, to that has been put in yeah. place in order to allow all those things. I mean, there have been a lot and lot that has been done. And uh, I think more is still to be done yes. because uh, the, the problem is a very, very big program. The gap is very, very um, uh, wide. And it is not today that we'll do it, but at least we have to start doing something. And we have started and more has to be done. And also, I think uh, we should uh, try uh, to emphasize, at least I say, to give scholarship for girls, you know, in order for them, those who have chosen to be in the um, technical field should be encouraged yes. by, you know, obtaining uh, the, scholar, uh, the, the, scho the um, scholarship in order to, to be able to achieve the curses yeah just mentioned that we should the government should help them mm -hmm. uh, create some sort of scholarship mm -hmm. for girls in the field or the girls uh, taking the field technical fields in the technical fields but you are in business and I'm, <laughs> i just want to ask you this funny question uh, are there some facilities for women 
in business to allow them really compete with many business we wish we wish <laughs> <laughs> we wish uh, we can have those facilities yes. uh, but you know as you know business is business if uh, you are in business or you have chosen to be in business then you have to do things the way men do it yeah. you should not uh, be expecting some positive discrimination because you are a woman you have to show that you are able to do it yeah. as men are doing uh, even better than men like i take an example if you go to a bank the banker is a banker and he has his own condition of loan yeah. of uh, giving loans yes. if you apply for a loan you have to uh, comply to the conditions given yes. by the banker yes. uh, you should not go there and say okay because i'm a woman you know uh, I, uh, you know <laughs> you have to do something for maybe us maybe they should give you five percent they should ten or five percent <laughs> discount or all those things. no yes. i think it doesn't work in business but um, there's something that is possible to be doing because that's why we really uh, gather ourselves in uh, associations or federations in order to be doing some collective work. And for ex I give an example. You know that in business we have we are many women in business here, yes. and many women, some of most of them, unfortunately, don't put their money in the bank. We have seen yes. uh, yeah. the example when uh, our markets uh, got burned yeah. last time. But suppose that all those women in business in Togo put their money in the bank. If we go to the banker and say, okay, we give the proof, put on the table for negotiation that, okay, this is uh, the envelope, this is what we have yeah. uh, in your bank. Okay. okay, we have billions and billions in your bank, so we want you know loans for our members, and we are negotiating this rate. If you agree with us, then we continue putting our money there. If you don't give us, then we might yeah. say, Okay, we move our money and go to another bank. <laughs> yes. Okay, I think, but we need to definitely have something to put on the table before, before we negotiate. Yes. If we don't have anything and you just go there and negotiate. It's not true. That's why also uh, we have always talked about business plan and all those yes. things. Yes, of course, we, all women that is that are in in, in trade, yes. they know exactly what they want and they have it all in their mind, but they don't write it. Yes, they need to write they it. They need to write <laughs> it. They will need to put it in a C A the A. The, yeah. um, the form in a that they, form. in a written form. Yes, that is bankable. That is uh, uh, that is good for a banker to be able to 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 pay. Yeah. So, madam, that takes yeah. us to the yeah. next question. That is, what do you think mm -hmm. is left for women to do in order to really reach that level? What do you think they have to do, and how do you think they can go about that? I think uh, it should first start with maybe I would not say that it's too late for we that are of a certain age now. Yeah. But I think there. There is need to start doing things with young girls because this is where it starts. Mm. Okay, and it starts first from home, but even when we go to when they go to school, then they should try to go out of these traditional fields that they always choose when they when it comes time comes to choose. Uh, for the professional yeah, field, the subject, the subject, yeah, yes. because normally they take something uh, that t that uh, lasts three day, three years. They want to be secretaries. They want to be that and that. Yeah. No, they have to be more ambitious. They they will have to to say that okay, we can do it. We yeah. can do it, and this is when they should. Uh, when it's time to choose the field of uh, education mm -hmm. that they have to choose those scientific. Or technological yes. fields in order to be able to be in the field of industry later on to be like uh, in, avi uh, in aviation yes. uh, to be uh, in uh, a medical to be in, uh, like a medical doctor engineering. engineering and all those things but if they they you know continue choosing like uh, uh, languages arts, arts and all English, those things German. yeah German no it could not work yes you know so I think that uh, we should tell them, and this is a long uh, process. process. Mm. We should always try to tell our girls that it is time for them to take the lead. Yeah. 
This is why we have put our, our on our mentoring program in order to help them. Because if we have had mentors in the past, I think we would have done much better than we are doing now. <laughs> yes. But it <laughs> is, you know, they have the chance yeah. to have us. So we have now to be able to give them, to give back what we have yes. so that uh, our young girls uh, have a better future that we are having now. Thank you, Madam. Well, we continue with our international news, the rest of our international news in brief, beginning with the crisis in Libya that has made foreign nationals leave this African country. Greece was among the countries to evacuate its citizens from Libya on Saturday, along with the United Kingdom, Belgium, and China. Once back home, people tell stories of violence and battles in several Libyan cities. France, Poland, and the United States have already evacuated their citizens from the country. In the view of Barack Obama, the U.S.-Africa summit that starts on Monday in Washington is an unprecedented event. Much is at stake, both for the United States and for the continent. The importance of this uh, for America needs to be understood. Uh, Africa is one of the fastest growing continents in the world. You've got six of the ten fastest growing economies in Africa. This traditional music group made up of Aka pygmies from the extreme north of Congo Brazzaville is back home. The musicians have returned home from a two-month tour in Europe. My goal in working with the Aka is to promote their culture, which is slowly disappearing. When I do tours with them, it is to have them become better known. They visited six countries, playing dozens of concerts in each. It was the third European tour of the Aka Pygmies in the last four years. Africa theater is in mourning. Soliman Kohli died on Friday in Conakry of a heart attack. He was 69. An actor and director, choreographer and dancer, this giant of African culture held forth on the continent scene for five decades, notably with the Koteba Ensemble that he founded in Cote d'Ivoire in 1974. For a while, he headed up the Cote d'Ivoire National Institute of the Arts. He returned to Guinea in 2011 as a government advisor. We'll be back to the studio with uh, Candid Legede. Madam, your uh, your last word, which message do you have for Togolese women, young girls, on this uh, occasion and uh, within this month of African Women Celebration? Yeah. My message will be very simple. Women, it's time for us to take the lead and make things change for us the way we want it. We should not let men tailor the world for us the way they want it. But together with them, we should do it together and shape the world the way it is that is suitable for each one of us. Thank you this very is much. My message to Thank you very much for your precious message. I hope all women of Togo have taken this message today. Well, we've come to the end of today's program. I hope you'll be with us again the next time we call on you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank well, you. viewers, the, here comes the end of today's program. I hope to be with you again next Saturday at the same time. Good evening and have a nice weekend. <laughs>